वर्णिवेशमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय और बिलौट घनश्याम महाराज पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जैन और पीडियोटिस जय स्वामी नारायण On last Sunday we are discussing about Sundar ji Swami what miracle happened in his life how he go from Garuda to the divine place where Dalu ji was and then after how he come came back this is what the story of Sundar ji Swami we have discussed on last Sunday now today we have more stories about sandas ji swami but before that what we have discussed in last sunday just for 2 minutes first who is sant das ji swami sandas ji swami was a great sant of bhagwan swami narayan at his time Sandar ji Swami by obeying Bhagwan Swami Narayan's command he has acquired so many spiritual and divine qualities in his life by meditating upon Bhagwan's divine form he has acquired such a high position in spiritual world that he can go far and wide without any help without any long time he can go anywhere and for that sri ji maharaj once stay in garuda and he commanded sant das ji swami go to dalu ji dalu ji lived in such a place that that place is divine no any human being can go there because dalu ji was a mukt and so is divine but sant das ji swami has no idea where dalu ji stay he has no any idea about the way still only to obeying bhagwan's command he start to walk when he could not find any way he remember bhagwan swami narayan and by remembering bhagwan swami narayan's divine form he acquire so much tremendous power divine power that he can within a few seconds he can reach in front of dalu ji now then after narrating glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan the religious discourses took place at the time in our satsang the divine method and system of our nand santo and the devotees how bhagwan swami narayan grant anybody any senior or meritorious person how bhagwan swami narayan grants a uh, samadhi meaning how those person go into trance this is what everything the power of bhagwan swami narayan sant das ji swami narrated to dalu ji then after sant das ji swami came back to garuda now sant das ji swami was living in garuda for a few days then after bhagwan swami narayan again commanded him to go to badrika ashram now sandas ji swami he only knew about badrika ashram that that is a divine place where nar and narayan rushi they lived and many other thousands of divine persons meaning divine mukto they also stay there Badrikasam is a, it's such a place that a spiritual aspirant uh the monks santo and devotees of bhagwan they perform austerities as well as they perform various kind of spiritual endeavor to please bhagwan 
that is the divine place and basically that place is situated in himalaya this is only a basic information regarding this badrika ashram but santosh ji swami did not know anything more than that how he could reach there there is no any certainty there is no any perfect way there is nothing but still as his previous experience santosh ji swami knew that it is not me it is not my power it is not my ability but it is bhagwan swami narayan's divine power his grace his miracle and only due to his divine power i can go there and believing this santosh ji swami just start to walk on north side because from garuda to himalaya himalaya remains in north and so sandaj swami without any question or without any map without any compass or anything he just start to walk on north side when he reach into himalaya after crossing so many jungle so many dense forest many many rivers everything he cross and finally he reach in himalaya but himalaya is very vast and huge how can he search where is the badrika ashram but still he has no any worldly aid there is no any help there is no guide nothing but as he has from faith in words of bhagwan swami narayan as he has faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan he has no worry he has no tension he has nothing any doubt in his mind and so he is just walking he continue his journey now before badrika ashram there is one divine river that magical river nobody can cross it even though today we have so many technologies to cross the river we can build our very long bridge on the river still nobody can cross this river because this magical river has one magic thing which your things deep into the water or even touch the water that things or even animal or human that become a stone and that's why the river's name is stone river now and this is the greatest obstacle in the path of sant das ji swami now his goal is to reach badrika ashram but before that he encountered this obstacle now sant das ji swami did not knew he did not know about this river and its magic power but first he dip a stick in his hand and when he dip the stick into the water which your part of the stick dip into the water that become a stone now santosh ji swami became surprised then he thought in his mind if i touch my feet if i touch hand to this water that all become stone then what is the way to cross this river because if you think about boat then boat also become stone and you cannot cross the river now this is the situation and without crossing the river nobody can reach badrika ashram and that is why it is said that no any ordinary human being can reach with this human body to a badrika ashram not only this but badrika ashram is situated in himalaya but not an ordinary human person or any human being can see or visualize this badrika ashram because that is a divine place only those persons who has attained divine vision by the grace of bhagwan swami narayan only those persons can see this badrika ashram 
and they can only reach there now sandas ji swami has a great obstacle in his path now he has no any chance to cross the river and he has no option to come back without passing bhagwan swami narayan's message to the badrikasram he has no any option he has only thought in his mind that i had any how reach to badrikasram this is his firmness in his mind this is his determination but as there is no chance there is no any other way he just remember bhagwan's divine form Sandhas ji swami sat by the river for meditation he remember bhagwan swami narayan's divine form this incident preaches whenever in our life we got any kind of hardness or any kind of obstacle if we want to follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan and for following his command if we have so many obstacle we have so many misery we have so many problems in our life then at the time we should remember this incident we should remember sant das ji swami how he cross his time of difficulty and we should also apply the same way sant das ji swami did not do anything but he just remember bhagwan he just remember and meditate upon bhagwan's divine form now whenever we encounter any obstacle in our life we should also do the same we should also remember at the time of difficulty bhagwan's divine form when we remember bhagwan bhagwan will help us because he is a very compassionate personality He is Lord of Lords. He is all doer, and that's why he always care for his devotees. Who remember whether a person is sinner or meritorious? But if he remembers Bhagwan, Bhagwan always help him. And in the same way, if we remember Bhagwan at the time of difficulties or if we have a time of happiness. both time if we remember bhagwan then he will help us he will guide us he will show us the way how can cross the difficulties how can solve the problems now sandhas ji swami sat for meditation and after a few minutes four divine persons from the sky they appear on earth they just came before sandhas ji swami and they ask very want to go sandhas ji swami say sandhas ji swami without asking them who are you where are you from nothing but he just reply i want to go to badrikasram there is also preachers don't ask any body any other question just focus on your goal what is your destination there is only one thought that must be kept in your mind no any other thought there is no any the doubt there is no any other question there is nothing but when we fix our destination in our mind and when we are always searching for that we are when we always busy when we are practice more and more to opt opt in our goal then god will help us Now, Sandhas Ji Swami, without any question, he replied, "I want to go to Badrikasram." Those divine persons sent by Bhagwan Swami Narayan, they are in fact the divine persons who lived in Badrikasram. Now they said to Sandhas Ji Swami, "If you want to go to Badrikasram, you have to cross this river." But we know. no any human person is able to cross this river and that's why we are here to bring you in badrikasram now if you want to 
come with us close your eyes sandaji swami close your eyes uh, close his eyes and remember again bhagwan swami narayan's divine form now these four divine persons flew with sandaji swami and they crossed the river not only that but they come far from the river 50 miles 50 miles far from the river on another side now they come on the earth and they say to sandaji swami now open your eyes sandaji swami open his eyes and he saw a divine place in front of his eyes he really at the place of badrikasram that is divine place what is meaning of badrikasram there is two word in this single word badri and asram badri meaning a tree of bare fruit and asram asram is a place where a monk or a sant or devotees or any spiritual aspirant they perform austerities or penance or any other spiritual endeavor to please bhagwan that is called ashram but what is connection between badri and ashram meaning a tree of bare fruit and ashram what is connection why this place is called as badrik ashram because badrik ashram is situated under a bare fruit tree that is very huge and very big bare fruit tree and under that under that tree thousands of divine persons the residents of badrik ashram they live there they doing bhajan meaning they worship him bhagwan they perform austerities there they doing everything there and that is why this place is called as badrik ashram Now Sandhaji Swami is front of this place. Now these po- those four divine persons they disappear. Now Sandhaji Swami enter into the ashram. First he uh, the uh, Sandhaji Swami saw the situation of Badrik ashram that thousands of the divine persons they perform austerities under that tree of bare fruit and on dais two persons narusi as well as uh, narusi and narayan rusi they both are meditating upon god's form this is what the scene sandhaji swami had seen now when sandhaji swami entered into the ashram premises Nar and Narayan Rusi both came forward to welcome Sandhaji Swami because they knew that Sandhaji Swami was a great saint of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and so they welcome him now they offer him a proper seat they offer him gar- garland of flowers they worshiping Sandhaji Swami with sandalwood paste then after they offer some fruits because the only food in badrikasram that is fruits there is nothing else now after this welcoming ceremony sandhas uh, sandhas swami was sitting on a uh, on on his seat offered by nur and narayan rusi and nur and narayan rusi they ask about bhagwan swami narayan 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 rusi asked sandhaji swami the greatness and glory of bhagwan swami narayan and his santo now sandhaji swami said that there is no one able there is no not only human but there is no any divine personality is able to fully realize the real glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan as the bhagwan swami narayan is supreme lord and that's why nobody is able to grasp his greatness and glory as it is 
that's why sandaji swami replied that i am not able to explain you bhagwan's glory and greatness as they are but still sandaji swami said i try according to my ability and then sandaji swami narrated everything about bhagwan swami narayan how bhagwan swami narayan perform various kinds of divine and human actions in this world meaning in gadda how his santo lived how his devotee lived in satsang this all our situation all our talks about satsang our religion our swami narayan fellowship this described to narayan narayan rusi now by talking in this way about our satsang time is past and it was a time of an evening now badrika ashram has a rules just as in this world we have rules at early morning we wake up after having shower and everything after becoming fresh we perform bhagwan's daily puja then after if it is possible we go to mandir and then after we perform any other jobs and any other activities in the same way at evening devotee came to devotee come to the mandir and they perform aarti and prayer to bhagwan in the same way badrikashram has rules at evening time all the rushis all the other divine persons all the divine mukto they gather in front of nar and narayan rushi they always worship nar and narayan rushi they pray to him then they sit before him and nar and narayan rushi they deliver religious sermons this is what the daily routine at evening time but today for this divine persons of badrikashram meaning the residents of badrikashram they have a unique and first time they have a guest because sandaji swami first time came to badrikashram and that's why they have a guest so first they all these divine persons they worship nar and narayan rushi then they also worship sandaji swami and they pray to sandaji swami they embrace sandaji swami then after they also ask about bhagwan swami narayan his divine and human like actions he performed on this earth the system and the method how bhagwan swami narayan santo perform also his devotee system and the talks discourses related to our satsang then everything is finished then nar and narayan rushi they introduce their divine persons about sandaji swami as well as they introduce sandaji they also explain about the system about the austerities and penance performed by those divine persons to sandaji swami nar narayan nar and narayan both rishi they explain to sandaji swami that there are so many divine persons the muktas are such that they eat once in a 12 years and all the time they meditate on bhagwan's divine form as well as they performing his puja and engage for devotion of bhagwan then again nar and narayan rushi they explain to sandaji swami that there are many divine persons are such that they eat once in a year and there are lots of per- divine persons those who eat once in a six months and thousands of those divine persons who eat once in a month this is what the situation this is what the method of penance or austerities performed by those residents of badrikashram in this way 
टू वे कम्युनिकेशन और कन्वर्जेशन हैपन बिटवीन संदास जी स्वामी एंड नर एंड नारायण ऋषि ना आफ्टर दैट बाय डिलीवरिंग डिस्कोर्सिस अबाउट भगवान स्वामीनारायण डिवाइन चरित्र बाय संदास जी स्वामी टू नर एंड नारायण ऋषि ना आफ्टर मैनी डेज संदास जी स्वामी डिजायर इन हिज माइंड to go to mansarovar mansarovar is a divine lake it is a lake when we consider it as according to this worldly phenomenon then that lake is situated on the very high level uh, high sea level that is the highest on on the earth the, that lake is also in mount uh, himalaya but on another side at present time mansarovar is, is situated in tibet and china it is actually very far from badrikashram and sandaji swami desired to go there he requested narayan narayan rusi i want to go to mansarovar narayan narayan rusi said you may go there but according to our inf- our information according to our knowledge the water of that lake mansarovar is very cold and the weather atmosphere around that lake is mostly windy so you not doubt you may go there but please accept our advice when you go there don't bath in the lake but sandaj ji swami said okay then nar narayan rusi again sent an four companion with sandaj ji swami now they go to man sarovar but sandaj ji swami knew that this is a lake where my lord bhagwan swami narayan himself as a nilkantwarni he came here he stay here he perform penance and austerities here and he also took bath many times in this lake so sandaj ji swami understood in his mind the glory of this divine lake and that's why I forget from his mind that narayan narayan rusi advised me not to to not to take bath in this lake and when the other divine persons they just have do the darshan of that lake and they want to come back to badrikashram but santadas ji swami they did not agree they say uh sandaj ji swami said to them i want to take a bath in this lake and sandaj ji swami took a bath in the lake but as the water is very icy cold and so after having bath when sandaj ji swami came back from the water he fell unconscious because of freezing cold his body could not tolerate the icy cold water of mansarovar lake and that's why he fell unconscious his body is started to become froze now those divine persons they took the unconscious body of sandaj ji swami to badrikashram then Uh, in the badrikashram they put the unconscious body of sandaj ji swami in front of nar and narayan rusi the another divine persons they lead the firewood near the unconscious body and give warm through uh, warm to the body of sandaj ji swami now after an hour sandaj ji swami came in conscious then after he is healthy he has no any problem now 
he has passed 45 days in badrikashram now naren narayan to say explain to explain and request to sandas ji swami that what the bliss what divine happiness you are enjoying here that is only limitless uh sorry only limited but the divine happiness and divine bliss you are enjoying in the presence of bhagwan swami narayan that is divine that is limitless divine and eternal happiness so please you may go there to enjoy that bliss then sandaji swami agreed and again he he was ready to go back to gadda now again in the way the same stone river came and that's why four divine persons sent by nar and nar and rushi with sandaji swami to cross this river and after crossing the river those four divine persons that is appear and from that place sandaji swami alone walking on down on south side when he crossed the himalaya then one state of kailas he entered in that state he knew that the king of this state is very religious and he has practice of yoga and even he mastered the yoga and by acquiring mastery on yoga he has acquired a uh, such a state that he can go uh, in samadhi for many days and by practicing more and more yoga he had attained such a state that he can remain 6 months in a trance but he has one problem as he has attachment with attachment and affection with his wife his wealth his property his prosperity his son his kingdom and so even he went into the trance still he remembered those worldly things and that's why he could not enjoy the eternal bliss in samadhi he cannot enjoy the bhagwan's divine happiness this is the problem now sandaji swami knew about the king's problem and that's why he preach that king about the real method and system of yoga sandaji swami explain before that king the real nature of this world how this world is perishable there is nothing is permanent permanent and in this way sandaji swami give it in a knowledge to that king and king understood all these what the whatever sandaji swami explain him and finally he uh, the king was relieved from the worldly bondage and finally he can enjoy he can able to enjoy the eternal and divine peace of uh, divine happiness of bhagwan in samadhi and finally after leaving this body he went to bhagwan's divine abad aksardham now sundaji swami leave that place and he again came back to gadda for darshan of sri ji maharaj but in the way he reached another village the village name is verwale now in that village as sandaji swami wandering without any clothes and at night he can walk so at night when he cross from this village the villagers knowing uh the villagers decided that this is this may be a robber and so they caught swami 
even not only this but villagers first beat swami very badly and then they bound him now sandaji swami thought in his mind how can i relieve from this bondage because i want to do darshan of maharaj i want to reach gadada then again he remember bhagwan's divine form he has only one remedy he has no any other solution for his problem whatever the problem whenever the problem wherever the problem whatever the problem at every time he has one single key of all his locks he remember bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan swami narayan every time helps sandhaji swami in this time bhagwan swami narayan took a form of sandhaji swami's relatives and in the form of many relatives bhagwan swami narayan requested the, those villagers that this is our relative please relieve him he is not a robber and then the villagers they ask forgiveness from swami and uh, they relieve swami now swami came back to gadra but before that he first came to jaitalpur and daban he took 10 days rest because from himalaya to gadra it is very far and so sandhaji swami very tired so he took rest for 10 days in jaitalpur and daban then after he reached gadra and held darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and in the assembly he narrated all his story how how he go to badrikashram what happened at the stone river how he had crossed that river how narayan narayan was welcome him in badrikashram what is the situation what is the rules and regulations and the method of austerities and penance of the residents of badrikashram and how he go from badrikashram to mansarovar what ha- happened there to him and again uh, how he had given uh, eternal knowledge to that king and make free from all kinds of bondage and how he relieved from the bondage of villagers in this way he narrated everything in the assembly all those new devotees they decided they developed from conviction of bhagwan swami narayan as a supreme god in his in their mind and the other santo and devotees they become pleased by listening bhagwan swami narayan's divine power and sandhaji swami also become very happy after having darshan of sri ji maharaj in gadda and he also become happy because he had experience many times a divine power uh many many miracles in his life and that's why he was also happy now in this way explaining and narrating the divine miracles happen in the life of sandhaji swami sadguru sri nishkunanand swami concluded this chapter 129 of bhakta chintamani sri ganshyam maharaj ni jay sri patim sri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmaj vasudevam hari madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje Sri Ganesham Maharaj Ni Jai